Look at the blue sky. Look at the blue sky. Blue sky. Look at the dark sky. Blue sky. Dark sky. Just to cut there a bit quick and explain to you exactly what this video is, we had intended for this video to be two videos. A informative sequence of the A303 entitled something like um, The Railway of Stonehenge. Um, and we'd also intended to do a vlog based on us trying to find any remnants locally of the railway which went from Amesbury um, and around towards Stonehenge and served some military camps and a couple of airfields. However, the rain, the wind put pay to our filming schedule. So this video is basically a combination of the filming that we did for both videos, which is A, us um, exploring around the place, and B, us talking more formally at the camera because it was part of the uh, more informative video. So we're gonna mash both videos together and basically see what we get out of it. Um, hope you enjoy it. One of the things that fascinates me most about history is that of the history of our landscape. So whether it's a huge ancient undertaking of a massive henge like the local Stonehenge or Woodhenge, or whether it's a, a vast expanse of a viaduct across a valley. Right down of course to small earthworks, boundaries, railway cuttings, anything about human interaction and how it affected the landscape today very much works for me. It was once said by a prominent railway engineer that if you're in the south of England and you're building a railway, you're either in a cutting or on an embankment. Today's project, however, is to find an old railway that circumnavigates Stonehenge might, however, be a little bit more tricky. You see, Building a railway at any point between the 1850s and the 1900s was often part of a much bigger picture. Huge sums of money were often thrown at these projects, either part of a north-south route or an east-west route. The goal being ultimately, in any event, the investors would reap the benefits of the money they'd invested. Rarely did that come to fruition, but that's not really the point here. The point is, thousands of navvies were employed to carve their way through the landscape moving tons of earth by the hour. On the eastern side of the Salisbury Plain, a number of military camps were being built during the start of World War I. In particular, one of the most prominent, Lark Hill, was designated the School of Instruction for Royal Horse and Field Artillery in early 1915. And whilst there wasn't vast sums of money to plough into this project, it was deemed essential that the line was extended from Amesbury up into the plain to feed these camps. It was because of this lack of money that the light railway hugged the contours of the land. No requirement for embankments or cuttings was needed. Good morning everybody. Um, or afternoon, I have no idea what it is. Is it afternoon? It must be afternoon. <laughs> or not. Okay, we're trying to um, vlog in the rain and keep, keep the camera dry. <laughs> and it's really hard work. We're right now in the middle of a field, which is the field between Woodhenge and the Cuckoo Stone over there, <clears throat> which is basically just north of Amesbury. Um, and what we're trying to do is find, as I've just mentioned probably, um, the old military railway which went from Amesbury right the way up to Lark Hill Camp, um, across to Rollstone Camp and then down towards the Longborough Roundabout where it split 
um, carried on, one bit carried on going south, which was to the Druids Lodge, um, and the other branch of it went uh, back westwards, nope, sorry, eastwards, back towards Stonehenge and served an airfield at Stonehenge. Um, so anyway, we're trying to get to a top corner point at the moment where we bumped into a little old man earlier who said there was still some uh, remnants of an old platform at Lark Hill. So we're heading in that direction now and I hope to find that. We'll try and do some overlay and we'll try and get some good content. Um, but who like? knows? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty messy at the moment. Um, still raining. It's still raining. Still raining. Um, so we're doing a bit of a A303 secrets of today as well. So we've got a lot of script that we're doing in between times. After Lark Hill Camp, the line continued to head west onto Rollstone Camp, where it also then branched south towards the Fargo Plantation, where there was a military hospital. That was almost one take peed up. And when I bumped into a guy earlier that said, here, you can see some of the old platform. Um, we're right now just south of Lark Hill and we're on the track bed. It's opening out a bit now as well. It is opening out and he said there are a... bits of the platform. Spot. Your second three. I wonder if this is kind of a bit of a spot because it's an open out a bit. Yeah. It's got a clearing almost. It's a clearing, there's, little, there's embankments either side. Maybe he meant embankments because I didn't know there was any remnants of a station here. I didn't even know there was like a station here. Um, I mean, obviously it's Lark Hill Camp, but does that imply that there was actually a station with, you know, or is it purely military? scary next to the 303 really <laughs> right so we're now in these uh, the little woods next to Longborough roundabout and there was a sign called is that Stoke Barrows I think that's what it said I saw the word Barrows okay you just filmed it <laughs> where, where even are we going I don't know so the line headed south from here towards this roundabout, which is a long barrow roundabout on the 303. That's Rebecca's face, not the long barrow roundabout. I'm not a um, roundabout. And this is where the line split. So north of here, the line went down to Stonehenge. South of here, it went down to Druid's Lodge, where the big water tower is, which we'll see in a minute. Um, so I kind of thought we could get out the north side of these woods, see the barrows, and see where the line split. So let's head that way. But I thought there'd be an obvious pathway. It even says Stoke Barrows, doesn't it? Abs, how infused are you about this um, little trip right now? How what? Infused. The opposite of what Mum's doing behind the camera. Hey, we got hey. half one. <laughs> okay, let's see where we go. It looks like a gimbal when you hold the camera like this. I wonder if it actually does work. Because the bottom of it is balancing you out. I've never seen one like that. I've never seen a gate hook like that. Well, it's like the one I've just already been on. Earlier I mean, on there was one. I get the bracket thing, but not with a massive. Yeah. Right, so that's south towards um, Long Barrow Roundabout. And north that way is where the railway came from. 
which is Fargo Woods. Right, go, go. So, the line headed from Fargo Woods, you can see in there in the distance, down towards these long barrows here, which is part of the Stoke Barrows. Now, just north of these three barrows here, the line went off back towards the east to Stonehenge, pretty much within 100 yards of Stonehenge. Off to the south here, however, the line followed the road now, the A345 towards Salisbury, uh, as far as Druid's Lodge, where there's a water tower which came from Waterloo. Both of these terminuses were built with the Royal Flying Corps in mind. During the summer of 1917, the government decided to increase its use of bombers within the war. Subsequently, a number of new airfields in the south of England were required. Stonehenge was top of the list. So, were they concerned about the proximity of the stones to the new airfield? It seemed not. It was a perfect flat area for them. The location was very, very close to some of the camps that were developing. And of course, it was on the edge of the Salisbury Plain. Right, we're going to get back home now because it's weighing down with rain. Okay, so that was the junction at this far end of the uh, camp light railway, the military railway. We're now heading back through these trees, which is on the Stoke Barrow. Uh, it's starting to weigh it down, so I'm going to get under cover while we put the camera away. Um, whew, we have to do a little bit more from home, I think, if that's all right. But we're done. Oh my goodness me, everybody. Subscribe. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Like, subscribe. Smash that like button. Smash it. Smash it. <laughs>